Ah, let's have some fun and talk about surveying the community. So Jens actually started his talk on Tuesday with a note that there are not so many talks with the data on the community. And he also mentioned that JetBrains was uh, among the first to collect data on C++ ecosystem. So I do work at JetBrains where we indeed do extensive research on the developers' communities. And the goal is to understand the pain points, the needs, the requests, and the main trends in the ecosystem. And I personally often rely on this data in my presentation. So we started this, the state of developer ecosystem system in 2017, and we are surveying and publishing the results and the raw data every year. So just don't get me wrong, every survey is biased, and all you need is to know in what way and how it affects the results, and limit it as much as possible. So you can find the section describing the methodology in every report we publish, and here is like a few findings from it. First of all, JetBrains brand bias. There is always a concern that data is mostly coming from JetBrains users and customers. And so it's focused around our tooling and the third party tooling we integrate with. This is true, of course, but first of all, we add our users with lower weight. Uh, so, and the share of JetBrains and non-JetBrains respondents is mostly constant across the years. Secondly, we use external channels to promote the survey, limiting the JetBrains brand visuals to the minimum. And we also validate the data against the community research in Python, in Rust, in .NET, and of course in C++ world. Targeting bias, like we know that 70% of all worldwide developers are based in 18 specific countries. And we run the survey, not limiting it in time, but until we collect the sufficient large samples from these countries. And we also localize the survey to eight additional languages to avoid English speaking bias, especially this is important for China and Asia country overall. Um, and also there is a waiting procedure to reduce the sampling bias, like for example, waiting professional developers vs working students. Talking about the validation, so as regular sponsors of the C++ Foundation, we have an access to their yearly collected C++ Foundation light survey raw data. So we not only compare the results, but we validate against it, finding similarities and trying to explain the differences. We also work together with Herb Sutter to have common questions in both surveys to validate the data for them. And the number of the answers we collect for C++ is kind of similar, but geographically they are different. So for DEFECA, it's mostly China, India, and United States on top. And for C++ Foundation, it's United States, Germany, and Russia on top. And also the audience of the C++ Foundation is, seems to be much more experienced in C++. So on average, they are more than 10 plus years of experience. So they probably more skilled and more professional in C++. So that's also a point for some specific bias. Another thing I noticed actually, actually some time ago is that among, um, in the multiple choice questions, people in C++ Foundation survey tend to select more than one option more often. And probably because they especially engaged the audience uh, with the wording check all that apply. So the trend and the top here, for example, in the question about the project models is the same, but the numbers are kind of different. And for us, it all started in July 2015 when we published our findings on C++ community, which we were collecting during two previous years while analyzing the C++ market and preparing the launch of two of our tools for C++, C-Line and ReSharper C++. This infographics was later shared in many sources, I guess mentioned in many books and talks, including Bjarne's article on the state of C++. But believe me, we were very naive at that time. So the list of the industries was incomplete and we were missing embedded completely, which is among the top three in C++. And the C++ versions, that's actually fun. We mixed C and C++ version in uh, like one graph, one question. But we keep learning these days uh, after all these years. And here are just a few examples. So uh, we have this question, which unit testing framework do you regularly use, if any? And quite many people were responding none for three years in a row until we actually added uh, an option, I don't write unit tests for C++, which I guess is 30% for 2021. And I write unit tests, but I don't use any frameworks, is 16% for this year. The next question is, which is the following tool, uh, tools do you use or your team use for the guideline enforcement or adequate quality analysis? Actually, 40% are answering none in 2021. And these days I started thinking that probably we're missing the tools from the CI. And that's what people confirmed to me in Twitter and in person that, yeah, there are probably some tools you have to add to the list. And also this year we added Clank format to the list while it's not a code analysis tool, but many people will mention it in the other section. And it took amazing 21% this year. And the last one about the standards. So we do ask about which standard you use. And we also ask about, do you plan to move to another C++ standard in the next 20 months? But people tend to have several projects in several standards like both C++ 17 and 11. 
And transition paths are different now. And now we ask more accurately, like asking from which standard to which exactly you are actually going to migrate and have these answers in the final infographics. So that's it for me for now. So 2020 results are coming soon. So stay tuned and that's it. Thank you.